All right, this is fifth grade, module five, lesson 14. And in this lesson, students are gonna be solving real world word problems uh, involving multiplying fractions. Now, parents and teachers, this is a really long assignment. It's not especially hard. There's just a lot of work necessary for these, packed into these what, four or five problems. So parents and teachers consider shortening this assignment or extending it over a couple of days, or perhaps turning it into a jigsaw where each group of students solves one problem and then they share uh, to the rest of the class with a poster. And that way students can practice uh, constructing arguments and critiquing the arguments of others. So let's get started. All right, so I'm not really going to be uh, doing all of the mathematics. Uh, the answer keys are online, so you can always check your work. But what I'll do is I'll talk us through the strategy for how to solve these problems, and then I'll leave the actual work up to you guys. So it says, Mr. Albano wants to paint uh, menus on the wall of his cafe in, the chalk in chalkboard paint. So he here you go. And the gray area... Here's the menus that um, is where the menus are going to be. And each of these menus is six by seven and a half. So what that's saying is this is six feet and this um, length right here, this height right here is seven and a half. So the idea is how many square feet of space will uh, Mr. Albano have? So we have four of them. So the first thing we need to do is find one. So that's going to be six times seven and a half. And then once you get that answer, then you're going to take that answer and then multiply by four. And that will give you the answer that we're looking for. Now the next section says, what is the area of wall space, this white part, that is not covered by the chalkboard? Well, the first thing we have to do is figure out the entire area of this entire wall. So that's gonna be 25 times 13 and 2 thirds. All right, so the first thing you've gotta do is you've gotta do that math problem. But then we wanna know how much of the white, now that would be for the whole area. But we need to subtract out the area of these four menus, so we're going to subtract out this, this cloudy answer right there, so to speak. So we're going to take the square answer, that's this guy right here, and then we are going to subtract the cloudy answer, and that would be this guy right here, and that is going to give us the answer that we want. All right, so there's our strategy. So first part, you're going to multiply 6 times 7 and a half, get your answer, and then times it by 4 because you have 4 of them, and hold on to that answer. And then the next part, you're going to multiply 25 times 13 and 2 thirds. That gives you the whole big, huge rectangle. And then you need to subtract out the cloudy answer previously. And that's going to give you the part, this white part here, but I'm going to shade it in red this white part that hasn't been covered by the menu. So here, Mr. Albano wants to put tiles in the shape of a dinosaur at the front entrance. All right, kind of a classic thing to do at a restaurant, right? And he will need to cut some tiles in half to make the figure. Now, if each square tile is four and a quarter inches on each side, what is the total area of this dinosaur right here. So first thing we're going to do is we need to find the area of one of these little tiles right here. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do four, well, four and a quarter. Oh, I don't like the fact that that's all messy. So let me do some erasing here. Let's erase, 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 erase. Um, fix that. All right, so I'm going to fix that and say, all right, so that's four and a quarter times another four and a quarter. And why am I doing that? Well, that's because each of these tiles is a square. Even these triangles are part of a square. So that's why I'm multiplying 14 and a quarter times 14 and a quarter, and that's going to give me the area of one red tile right here. 
All right, so now what I need to do is I need to count, and I need to see, well, how many of these red tiles do we have all together? So let's do some counting. So it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, those are 12 full ones, but now let's piece together tiles, uh, triangles, that are going to continue making whole tiles. So, so far we have 12, and then these two combine to equal 13, these two combine to equal 14, these two combine to equal 15, these two combine to equal 16, and then this one plus this one equals, uh, oh geez, I lost count. <laughs> So we got to count real quick again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we have 17 of these little tiles. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this answer and we need to multiply by 17. And that is going to give us the area of the entire dinosaur. Now here, A plus glass is making windows for a new house that is being built. And the box shows the list that they must make. How many square feet of glass are they going to need? So we see, we see that one window, and I'm not drawing it to scale, is four and three quarters by three and three fifths feet. And then another window, and again, I'm still not drawing it to scale, is two and four fifths wide by six and a half feet wide. And we have 15 of these, and we have seven of these, and we want to know what's our total. So that's going to be a lot of work. That's going to be, first, we're going to have to multiply three and three fifths times four and three quarters, because that gives us one window. And then we're going to take that answer and multiply by 15, because we know that we have 15 of those windows. And then in the same kind of way, first we're going to multiply two and four fifths feet times six and a half feet. That gives us one window. And then we're going to take that window and we're going to multiply by seven, because we have seven of them, and then we've got these two answers, and we need to add those together because the question is asking, what's the total amount of square feet that they're going to need? And so that means we're going to have to add both of these answers together. And the last slide, Mr. Johnson needs to buy seed for his backyard lawn. If the lawn measures 40 and four-fifths feet by 50 and seven-eighths feet. You know, folks, in real life, we would just round this up to 41. We would round this up to 51, and we would multiply. But So they're kind of forcing us to use mathematics, you know, fractions, when in real life, we probably wouldn't. In real life, we would just round up. Um, but anyway, uh, how many square feet of seed will he need to cover the entire area? So the idea is we're just going to need to multiply... 40 and 4 fifths times 50 and 7 eighths. And that's a, lot of, that's a lot of multiplication. That's going to be a big answer. We know that this is close to 41. And we know that this is close to 51. And really, if we could think of this as 40 and 50, and 40 times 50 is 2,000. So we know our answer, and I'm going to squiggle that equal sign, is about... 2,000 square feet. Um, so that answer is going to be a big answer. So anyway, one bag of seed will cover 500 square feet if he sets his seed spreader to the highest setting and 300 square feet if he sets it to the lowest setting. So those are our bounds. How many bags of seed will he need if he uses the highest setting? Well, we can quickly it's going to be division, essentially. It's like how many 500s go into our answer. And since my estimation is 2,000, I can see that for the 500, which is the highest setting, we're going to need about four bags. 
because one, uh, the highest setting covers 500 square feet, and we know it's about 2,000. So we know the answer is about four bags. And then at the 300 square feet, which is the lowest setting, so that basically saying, well, how many 300s go into 2,000? And, you know, it's basically about six or seven. So I'll round up and I'll say about seven bags. All right, so that's a real rough estimation. And that's the idea, is in real life, we would use estimation. I don't know if in real life we would actually multiply. Now, if we were doing like fine, super important carpentry work, where we are buying wood and we're building something and it's got to fit perfectly, then we really would use fractions. But when we're talking about seed to cover lawn, we're probably going to estimate and, and do everything through estimation because that's perfectly fine. Um, but anyway, uh, your teacher is probably going to ask you, parents and teachers, you may consider um, having your students redo this problem using nothing but estimation um, first because really that's more real life than anything. And that wraps up 5th grade module 5 lesson 14 where we are solving real word world problems involving mixed numbers and multiplying and finding the area of um, rectangles involving mixed numbers.